Good morning, everybody. It's lush to be with you all today. I hope everybody's really well. I wanted to share this morning a little bit um, of what I've been thinking about from reading the story of Elijah recently, particularly the story in 1 Kings 17, where God moves Elijah out of the desert through a practical need. His water source has dried up with an instruction to go to a specific town and find a widow who will provide him with food. He does as he's told, but manages to find only a widow who has no food for her child or herself, let alone enough to share with Elijah. I think if this was me at this point, I wonder whether I would have assumed I'd heard God wrong, or that I'd found the wrong widow and moved on to find someone else. Elijah's response is neither of those. He does not move on to find another widow. Even in his own hunger and thirst, in his own need, he's moved by compassion for this woman and takes an opportunity to bring her to an encounter with God to meet both her physical and spiritual needs. How often am I too tired or too deep in my own need to not even see someone else's and certainly not to feel willing or able to meet it? This woman is too far through the journey of slow starvation and hopelessness to be able to hear the voice or see the plan of God for her life. So Elijah calls it out in her and empowers her to walk it out. He returns her to her home in dignity with a miraculous provision to meet her practical need. She cooks a meal for herself, her son and for Elijah with ingredients that before she met Elijah didn't exist. In this process, Elijah's practical needs are met as well, and as a result, all of them are blessed, probably to a greater extent, because they are sharing the blessing. The story of Elijah's life, which we find in the Old Testament, is a highlight reel of miraculous moments and interventions like this. But that's all it is, the highlights. It's the unseen life that doesn't make it to the Bible stories in detail, that prepared Elijah for moments such as these. In between, Elijah lived the life of a nomad, moving with the will of God through the desert, cultivating a deep prayer life and complete dependence on the provision and voice of God. The fruit yielded from this life, the assuredness of the faithfulness of God to provide, Elijah's listening heart, his trust in all that he knew to be true of God's character, are what meant that he could call this starving widow and her son out of death and into life. Elijah spoke the word of God to her with conviction because he'd learnt to hear it for himself in the unseen place. For many of us in lockdown, we felt God drawing us to deeper prayer lives, a recentering and shift in priorities and rhythms a journey into Elijah's desert of rich and fruitful relationship and prayer with God. Rich and Dave have shared in the last couple of weeks about justice and peace being fruits of our deepening prayer lives. For me, these two are intrinsically linked, synonymous with each other. One cannot exist without the other. Elijah's intimate relationship with the father cultivated in that secret place meant that a starving widow and her son were met with justice, hope, peace and a future, when their plan for the day had been to give up and die. My prayer is that as we, as a body, press further into God in this season, it would not only be as individuals or even as a church that we are changed, but that our communities and our city would be transformed. As we discover new depths of the heart of God, hear his whisper more acutely, are drawn into relationship with him, I pray that out of the secret unseen place with him, we would be moved by compassion to release heaven's blessing, provision, justice and peace, to call out the destiny that God has for the people that we live alongside. Have a great day.